factories are not in fact new. But in JavaScript, and also you could apply this in other languages as well, they are becoming more popular. It's the idea of composition, or composing something together, and these two go hand in hand. So what do we mean by a factory? Well, when you think of a factory, think of a car factory, where you're creating objects on a production line, and as the car goes down the production line, you end up with a finished car. However, we understand that we don't build new factories for every new model car there is. So for example, I can take the exact same factory and I can modify it. So we can have a standard car and then we can have the sports version of that car. And they both go through the same factory, but they're composed of different components to make them what they are. Some have standard parts, others have more complicated and more technical parts. In fact, one factory could make several different makes of the car, like Audi or Porsche. They can have one factory, but they can make many different model cars with the same production line, with the same tools. Well, likewise, we can have constructors, factory functions, that construct, that create, like a factory, objects. But there's one important point here. It's composition. Instead of going with the inheritance model, which is saying that everything should be grouped together in one, which doesn't make it very flexible, we have factory functions. They're still constructor functions in JavaScript, or you can even do this with abstract classes in PHP and other scripting languages. What you're trying to do is make the process of creating objects adaptable. In other words, you can change its members. Objects are composed of members, properties, and methods. But what we want to do is mold it and change it, just like a car object going through a factory can be changed and the process can be adapted depending on what car is coming through the production line. Well, we can do the exact same thing with classes and factory functions. You can abstract away certain processes so that you can adapt and make flexible the members that are making up the object, just like composition. When you think of composition, think of a sheet of music that has lots of musical notes on it. And that composes, just like a composer, composes music by all of the different and little pieces of notes that he uses. We compose sentences and words of letters. So you have a composition of letters that make words and words compose sentences. It's just allowing smaller pieces and that makes it very flexible. So when we have a car object being constructed in our program or in the real world, we can change that front body panel to be more sporty or make it the standard model or the engine. I can make the engine bigger or smaller and it's the same factory function. I could also have more features in the sports model, whereas in the standard model, there are less features. There's no sport button, for example, and we can have the same exact thing in programming. And that's where factory functions and composition come in. That's all it means. It simply means don't fully predefine the object and say that's set in concrete. Define a factory that can build objects and can adapt those objects in the build process. Adapt it to our needs, what we need as programmers.